So I've had quite a few questions on people asking me on how I rigged up the mini auxiliary fuel tank on my off-road lawnmower. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. So here's the tank in all its formal glory. Uh, I actually have a YouTube community post about this. Now the tank that is on there is actually from one of these things. This is your bar and chain oil uh, reservoir. Uh, as you can see, that tank is pretty much identical. My granddad had the same exact type of pole saw attachment, but something happened with it. He wanted me to look at it, so I took the whole thing apart and turned out the gearbox, the ring and pinion, a couple of teeth were broken off of it. So I took all the good parts off of it, took this tank, and I thought about it, and I'm like, well, what if I mount this on the side of the motor and have like a mini auxiliary gas tank? So that's what I did. So how did I mount it? So first, I kind of played around both sides and kind of seemed more logical to put it on this side. This hole uh, was actually already in the motor, so I just ran a wood screw right in there that held the front end, and the second one right there, that bolt that holds the fan shroud on, uh, I just ran some plumber tape up to this top part of the uh, mounting tab, and I ran some piece of steel uh, to that to kind of give it some support, and as you can see, it is pretty solid. Since this was on the gearbox, you know, this was the pump in order for you to pump the oil to the chain, but with this, I just basically, you know, epoxied that shut, just ran a tube up here, put a screw in here. I don't really know why I did that, but had to find some way of doing it. Um, and this bottom part where the fuel line comes into, all this is quarter inch fuel line. Uh, you know, that runs that little T, you got a standard, you know, on off switch thing right here. It then continues up into another fitting, which this end I actually jammed in there and epoxied all this crap together. And if you look inside of here, there's no fuel in here at the moment. That is where the fuel line is attached at. Here's another view on how I mounted it. As you can see, that piece of steel in there is mainly just to help support it. And I also had to drill a couple holes in the top so the fuel would vent. Here, I'll give you another little size comparison. This is a fuel tank for an RC car. It's a Nitro Rustler. Um, this is just a little bit bigger. Uh, this motor goes about maybe 10 minutes or so on runtime, depending on what day it is and how you tune it. But, you know, this is a pretty massive motor. I mean, you're not gonna be able to drive all day and all night with this fuel tank, but if you do run out of this tank, you can quickly just switch over to auxiliary. It'll get you back to the shop or get you close enough to the shop anyway. It's kind of like a uh, petcock system on an ATV. You know, you got on and you got off and reserve. Basically, when you cut it on, there's a tube that sticks up about this far up in the fuel tank and the fuel level runs down. Uh, it'll start cutting out and that lets you know, hey, uh, you're low on fuel. So you flush it to reserve and that opens up the very bottom so you still have a little bit more fuel left. It's kind of the same principle, but instead of it all being in one tank, it's two separate tanks. So pretty much the fuel system running down to a little fuel shutoff under there is pretty much exactly the same as it runs to the carburetor. But all I did was put this little T in, ran my fuel line up, install my auxiliary tank, and yeah, it works really good. Hadn't had any problems with it. Now, is it really worth doing? Depends on who you are. You know, if you're gonna be out riding a lot in the woods, you know, like five miles round trip or something like that, I would probably consider it. Or if you like bells and whistles, like I do, because I like bells and whistles, um, and this is a free modification. So I decided to stick this on here. So that way I can have an auxiliary fuel tank. The thing I really would like to do is put two of these size fuel tanks on here, but I mean, look under the hood. I don't really have any room. And the reason I took the rear tank out is because I wanted to have a trunk and have somewhere to put my stuff at. Here's the other tank up here in the attic, and this is the old wiring harness from the off-road mower. Um, so I might put this on another project or something like that, but I'm pretty surprised how expensive this fuel tank is. I think, uh, like on eBay, they're going for like $100, $150. It's pretty crazy. So this modification all really depends on what you want to do. If you like bells and whistles and you're going to be driving a long ways, you know, it's an option. If you're just going to be riding around the yard and you want things to be as simple as you possibly can, and you don't like bells and whistles, then you can keep this stock fuel system. And I've actually had to use it before when I was riding around the front yard because I did not check the fuel for some stupid reason. And it left me stranded right about there. Luckily, since I put that fuel tank on there, I had some fuel in my auxiliary tank, so I flipped the switch on, let it kind of, you know, prime up and everything, kind of had the 
blow on the top of it to get it to kind of force into the carburetor. Not really the best thing to do. Since there's only a little bit of fuel in there, it's not really gonna have enough gravity to push through, so that's why I kind of had to blow on the top. But yeah, I started it up and I drove it right on back to the garage. It's kind of like some of your old John Deere tractors where you have a two and a half gallon tank roughly for your gasoline and your 12 gallon tank for your, any basically fuel you want to put in it because those tractors were all fuel engines. Having a all fuel offer lawnmower sounds pretty epic, but this carburetor, you know, it's only tuned for gasoline. So if I put alcohol or any other fuel in there, it's probably going to one, screw up the carburetor and two, you know, it's going to be a real pain in the butt trying to adjust it every time. So we're just going to keep this gasoline. So to refill it, all you do, just like a standard gas tank, you remove the cap, get your nozzle in there, and you gotta be really tricky because this thing fills up extremely fast. Just like that. And all you do when that's full is switch it from main to auxiliary. Again, I wasn't really planning on doing this modification, but as I was taking apart my Grenade's uh, pole saw, uh, it just kind of clicked in with me and I'm like, what if I install it on the mower? That'd be a pretty cool idea. Hadn't really seen many people done it. So that concludes this video. Let me know if you think it's a really great idea. Let me know if you think it's a really stupid idea or anything else you think I should do better. Or if you have an auxiliary fuel tank in your off-road mower, let me know. I'm sure other people would like to see them as well. So yeah, hope you liked this video. If you did, click on the other buttons on YouTube or say to click. If you didn't like this video, click on thumbs down twice because two is better than one. Three more doesn't work. That doesn't count for likes, as we all know. And yeah, y'all should see me in the next one.